So good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about brain bleeds. Brain bleeds is a very high yield topic for the USMLE step one, step two, step three. So it's important that you know it and you know it well so that you can ace the neurology, neuroscience section of your boards. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Dr. Esio Sagadaro, and I am a neurology resident physician and a neuroscientist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. So with that, here's a board style question. What is the most likely underlying etiology of the pathology shown below? Your options are tearing of the middle meningeal artery, shearing of the bridging veins, rupture of the posterior communicating artery aneurysm, or rupture of perforating arteries. This is the type of question that you will see if you're studying for your neurology shelves, if you're taking USMLE 1, 2, and 3. And if you note, this is a second order question in which the first order is you have to look at the image and recognize what kind of brain bleed that is. And then once you recognize the brain bleed, the second order is knowing what's the underlying etiology of the brain bleed. And as you move along in your step exam, the order of the questions tend to get more advanced. You know, you're assembly one, you know, maybe ask first, second order questions. You're assembly two will tend to ask third order questions. And when you, when you get to you're assembly three, they're asking multi-step, third, fourth order questions. So it's really good that you have a strong foundation in certain topics because as you go on studying for the different board exams, it'll just build on the material that you learned previously. So let's break this question down. When you get an image question like this, the first thing is I don't even look at the answer options first because sometimes it could be misleading. I like to go to the image take 10 seconds to figure out, well, what do I think is going on, right? So images can be, you know, very tricky, but I'm gonna help you break it down. When you look at an image, you wanna first understand, what is it I'm looking at? Am I looking at an MRI? Am I looking at a CT? Am I looking at an X-ray? And this image here is a CT scan because bone is bright on CT. Second question you wanna ask yourself is, what organ am I looking at? Am I looking at a shoulder? Am I looking at a chest? Am I looking at a brain? And this is the brain. Outside here, if you can see my mouse, let me see if I can find a, get the pointer. Um, there we go. So here is the gray matter. And then in this region here, you have white matter. So now we say this is a CT scan of the brain and this is an axial cut. And if you remember, things that are bright on CT scans are either calcium or blood. And because of the way this pattern looks, this is not calcium, it's a little bit, calcium would be this bright density here as the skull. And if you look at this density here and this density here, this density is a little, it's not as, as dense as the bone skull here, which is made of all calcium, so you can infer that this, although it is hyperdense, it's probably not calcium, more likely blood. And remember, blood in the brain is bad, 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 and it's an emergency. So now that we've looked at the image, we know it's a CT scan of the brain, axial cut, and we know that this is not normal. There is some blood where it shouldn't be. Now the question is, well, what kind of, brain bleed is it? So my next slides are going to talk about the high yield brain bleeds you should know for your USMLE. So first, we're going to talk about epidural hematoma and the board exams, they love epidural hematoma. And again, this is a CT scan of the brain without co contrast axial cut. And one thing you wanna remember is, again, this is blood and the pattern of the blood, the shape of the blood will tell you what the name of the hematoma or hemorrhage is. Know that epidural 
hematomas are lens shape, kind of out packaging, and they push on the brain tissue that's underlying it right here. And they can also cause some midline shift, which you see going on here. So anytime you see this, think epidural hematoma. And then the next thing you want to remember is what is the underlying vascular etiology of the epidural hematoma? And you see here, it is the middle meningeal artery. So if we go back to the question, this image here does not look like this. So we can rule out option A. So let's go to the next brain bleed that they love to test on your board exams. The next bleed is a subdural hematoma. And the difference between an epidural hematoma and a subdural hematoma, at least on imaging, again, this is a CT head without contrast of the brain axial cut, is that the subdural hematoma is crescent shaped. And you see here, this is crescent shaped, kind of like the moon, and the underlying etiology is bridging veins. So high yield, subdural hematoma, know what it looks like on a CT scan, crescent shape, underlying etiology is the bridging veins. So let's go back to the question. This image does not look like a crescent shape. So it's not a subdural hematoma. So that rules out B, bridging veins. Let's go to the next high yield image that they love to test on your boards, which is subarachnoid hemorrhage. And they, so ignore hemorrhage, if you remember star pattern, let me pull out my pen. And the reason why it's called the star pattern is if you look here, it kind of looks like a star in a way, if you use your imagination. And the blood is really hiding out in the uh, cisterns. And it's due to a rupture of a berry aneurysm in the circle of Willis. So I want you to commit this image to memory because again, subarachnoid hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhages are also high yield on board exams. So just you just have to commit it to memory, know what it looks like, and you'll get the question right every single time. So CT scan without contrast of the brain, star pattern, you think subarachnoid hemorrhage, Subarachnoid hemorrhage are due to rupture of the berry aneurysms. So let's go back to the original question. Does this look like a star pattern? That's fine. So we have this, these cisterns are being highlighted because of the blood. Yes. So star pattern is correct, subarachnoid hemorrhage. And remember what are subarachnoid hemorrhages due to? Exactly, rupture of berry aneurysm. So any, if you see any of the options that say aneurysm, more than likely that's gonna be the correct answer. And then that's how you work through these answer choices. So what about answer D, perforating arteries? What does that look like? So another, high yield image that they love to test on your board exams is intraparenchymal or intracerebral hemorrhage. And that's what it looks like here where there's actually blood in the brain tissue itself. And I'll point, let me get my, and here is where the blood is and here's the surrounding tissue. And this, so if you see, hyper dense regions in the surrounding tissue on a CT scan, more than likely it's gonna be a brain bleed. It's gonna be intraparenchymal or intracerebral hemorrhage. And know that it's due to perforating arteries, rupture of perforating arteries. And that's what that looks like. Very good. So just kind of wanted to run through what the high yield brain scan, sorry, what the high yield brain bleeds are on USMLE. And so let's review the question again. 
we talked 